Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our continuing series of science uh, sharing seminars. Uh, today, I'm happy to introduce uh, Ken Cook, the Sioux at uh, WFO Wichita, and he's going to talk a little bit about the use of dual polarization radar and their uh, experiences and perspectives from an operational side in the IBW, which all of you are probably very familiar with now. So, uh, Ken, it's all yours. Okay, thank you, John. And uh, uh, just kind of uh, to reiterate what John said, I, I did want to, I know this case has probably been beat to death, but uh, I just wanted to show like kind of what our office went through during this scenario. It was very interesting, uh, you know, the, the, it came close to the offices type of thing. Just to show how the whole uh, marrying of dual pole radar and what we can see uh, into this impact-based warnings uh, so-called experiment or what have you that we're doing. So that's the uh, motivation for this talk, and that's primarily what I'm going to talk about. Uh, during that outbreak, we had 24 total tornado tracks, and the uh, the two I'm going to focus on is the one up here that occurred southwest of Salina uh, that you see here in the red circle, and that was where the EF4 occurred in our forecast area. And then uh, the second one I'll discuss is this one down here at the south part of our forecast area that ended up striking Wichita. Uh, this is a long-lived supercell as well that came up out of Oklahoma. So these are the two that I'm going to focus on during this talk. The first one I'll discuss is the one here in Salina. And uh, I know it's uh, you know a loop here of what's going on. You probably can't see it because of the bandwidth. But this basically just gives you a uh, kind of an overview of how the supercell was going here in uh, central Kansas and the track that it took down here from near Lyons up uh, to near Salina. And there's uh, Canopolis Lake is in here too, so um, it did strike near there. Uh, as far as the central Kansas uh, EF4, um, this is what the SRM looked like um, leading up to that uh, when we got the reports and went out and surveyed the damage. And again, here it is, uh, northeast of Lyons at this time. And then uh, over here on the right, it was further uh, away. So you can see there's a very strong meso there. You're looking at um, about 90, 80 to 90 knots inbound and, and just about likewise outbound. Uh, on your screen now is some of the, uh, the, the uh, imagery of what we went up. It did strike a house, a farmstead there. And in your upper left, you can see a lot of the scouring there, the trees, and the lower right here, or the lower left, sorry, is what's left of the home. The entire uh, foundation, or the, everything but the foundation in this little stairwell was gone off of the house. Um, in, the, in the lower right here, if you look in the, the dirt road, there's a little bit of a ridge there. That's actually where the, uh, the, the, all the sand and dirt um, toward you, if you will, was scoured away at a depth of about five inches, five to six inches deep uh, from the tornado. And above that is the, uh, this is what was left of a tree. It was completely debarked. And what's coating the tree is the mud and dirt from the uh, picture below of, of the dirt road. So, and you can see some of that uh, to the left here of the tree as well. It's a pretty powerful storm. Um, this is kind of the uh, aerial shot of the house that was struck right down here along Avenue W, uh, if you could see my cursor. And uh, so just a, it was very interesting, some of the decisions that were made uh, during the, uh, the, this experiment. Um, the, the residents here, uh, they looked to their southwest, saw that a tornado was coming. They saw something close to this. This is a picture taken um, not far from their home of the tornado approaching them. They realized the tornado was coming, so the decision that they made was there was plenty of time. They got in their car, and they actually drove down here to this 29th road here and watched the tornado actually decimate their home. And then they came back to it and realized, you know, the whole thing was gone. So it was very interesting dis uh, decision-making by uh, this individual family. And, uh, again, this is what some of the aftermath was. And they... Uh, they did live through it, so they made the right to decision, and uh, you know they survived. And I don't think if they were if they were hiding in their home at this time uh, when this came over, they they more than likely have been uh, at least injured, if not uh, killed, in this situation. So, uh, you know, did the warnings that we issue with the enhanced statements uh, do anything for that? That's that's uh, it was very interesting to uh, discuss that. So here's a look at the dual pole data. 
Um, you can see here the reflectivity um, here on the left hand side of your screen. Uh, you can see there's a debris ball there, or what looks to be one. And with this this part of the case, this is a GR data, so it's it's the unfiltered that you get. Um, so here in the ZDR, right here in the uh, what would be identified as the meso with the GR algorithm, uh, there's a ZDR below zero, and that is uh, you know, the coalition correlation coefficient at 0 0.5 degrees is very low in the 0.4 range. So we could deduce here that that is debris, and uh, then we looked at about 15,000 feet, and we do still have the same correlation coefficient signature. So this debris is being lofted very high, very large volume of it. Uh, so from that and from some of the research that they've done down at Nestle, uh, you can suppose that this is a pretty powerful storm, a pretty significant tornado going on. So um, you know, just from that standpoint, Using some of that information, we were able to, uh, at least our forecasters were able to during this event, be able to put that information in their warnings uh, to give people kind of a better uh, represent, representation of what's going on. We were getting a lot of uh, storm chase reports in that, and I'll go through that here with the second case I'm going to talk about here, um, which is the one that was coming up out of uh, Wichita, or up out of Oklahoma. So here just to, uh, again, you know, I put a loop in here, and I understand the bandwidth. If you download the presentation, you get